What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Inspire Me TV. So glad that you and your family have chosen to join us today. Have we got a word for you? Listen, we are in a powerful teaching and I want you to tune in to a message already in progress. Hey, just in case you can't get us on TV, you can also listen to Inspire Me Radio. That's right, we are on the radio now, 98.7 FM every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. As always, log on to our website, inspirationcity.org, for more information, you can also stream live. Listen, I'll be back in a few moments to give you more information. God bless you. But you got to understand this, that they were in this town called Bethsaida. Now, this is a different town that others mentioned in the Bible. Uh, this was a town that wasn't ready for Jesus. This was a town that wasn't ready for the miraculous signs that, or, or didn't understand what Jesus was all about. So Jesus said, even as it relates to his disciples, Jesus said, all right, I'm going to take you by the hand and lead you out of the village. Then I'm going to cure you. Now, I was wondering how come Jesus took this man by the hand and led him out. I mean, wouldn't it have been great for Jesus' ministry to leave, to heal him right then and there like so many times he did before? And Jesus dropped in my spirit that sometimes everybody doesn't need to see the process of your healing. Yes, sometimes people don't need to see how you got healed and how you got delivered and how you started your business. All they need to see is the finished product. And is there anybody in here that can testify? I've learned in my life that everybody doesn't need to see. Why? Because some people, when they see the process, they will try to interject in the process and stop the process. But bump your neighbor and tell them, listen, what God has for me it is for me and I'm not going to let no devil in hell stop the process of what God has for me he took him out by himself and he said I'm going to heal you everybody don't need to see the process and let me go ahead and tell you this whatever God is working on in your life stop telling everybody why you're in the process yeah stop telling everybody why you're in the process everybody don't need to know yeah, I understand you want to share because you know in your spirit and by faith what God is doing. But God says, all right, God says sometimes just be quiet and, and, and just have a smile on your face and just say, you, I know God is getting ready to come through for me in 2017. Everybody don't need to see the process. Stop telling everybody all the steps that you're doing to start your business. Yeah, stop telling everybody all the steps that you're doing about going to school because people will throw a monkey wrench in the process that God is trying to get you through. God said just be quiet sometimes and let him work on you in private. Stop allowing God all the time, letting people know all the time that God is working on you. Here's the reality. He's working on all of us, but you don't necessarily need to know what God is doing right now. You just have to know when I come out, Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right, let, let, let me see if I can make a play. Uh, uh, th th there, there are two cities that are, that are known uh, for, for trains going through that city, uh, Chicago and New York. Uh, the difference is uh, Chicago's, for the most part, uh, their trains, their rails are above ground. Yeah, they call them the L's. It means they are elevated. Uh, New York is what they call subways underneath yeah uh, in Chicago everybody everybody knows that you're on the train everybody knows particularly where you're going but on the subway in New York there's only a certain amount of people those who are on the train with you that know where you're going everybody above ground watch this has no idea that you're moving all right here it is if you ever been to New York you know there are parts of New York that are just nasty I've been in a New York subway it's just nasty I mean people do all kinds of stuff on a New York subway but even above the ground they're spitting they're walking they're doing a whole lot of stuff but they have no idea that you are on the subway and here it is on the subway even though it's stinky in the subway even though nobody knows where you're going in the subway there's one thing 
about a subway that you have to understand the subway is constantly moving and as long as you're on the train you'll be moving too but when you get to your destination when you arrive to where you wanted to arrive to you come up from the subway and show up of where you have come to come here God is telling you you got to get to the place in your life where you just ride that Holy Spirit subway and when God said come up on out of there and show what I've done for you you better stand up and show God says I know you've been in the hospital but don't tell everybody but when you come out you come out healed you come out delivered you come out set free is there any I feel like preaching in this place is there anybody in here that can testify I'm on the move because God is blessing me he says yeah yeah sometimes they just need to see that you are healed now notice again in verse 23 he takes him out by himself he says I'm gonna give you a personal contact he he spits on his eyes yeah that, that, there, that there's no there's no healing properties in the saliva that God did. Some suggest that maybe because, like I said earlier, particles would get in the eye back in Jesus' day, that he just used his saliva as a way, uh, because the eyes became glued shut, that he just used it as a way to soften the particles so that the man could open his eyes. The healing power is all in Jesus. Amen? And so he spits on his eyes, he lays his hands on him, and then he says, can you see anything now this bothered me Irvin because God knows it all so why would he ask him can you see I mean is God doubting is Jesus doubting his own delivering capabilities why would he ask him can you see anything I mean the reality is in in John he asked the man who was going to the pool he said do you want to be healed but he hadn't touched him yet this is different Jesus had already laid his hands on him and then he asked him, can you see anything? I wondered why, Jesus, would you ask this man, can you see something after you have placed your healing hands on him? God told me to tell you, the question was not for information. It was for revelation. The question was not for information. It was for, I already know the process and how it's going to work. But what I want to know, God wants to reveal to them, to him, and to us as God begins to work on us in 2017 because many of you now are frustrated that nothing you set out to do has happened on this 29th day of January. God says it's just a process. You got to go through the process. But here's what God wants you to know. God wants to reveal to you how much more you need him. Oh, this is good. He says, can you see anything? The man said, yes, I, I, I see men, and they look like trees. The, infamous, the, 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 the idea here, is, the metaphor here is this, is that, yes, I, I see something a little bit, but it's not really clear. I really can't make it out who they are. I, I, I see shadows. I, 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 see, I, I see silhouettes, but my vision is not clear yet and so what God was telling him and letting him know all right you've got your healing and your cure to a point but you need more of Jesus all right here it is see some people and I ain't talking about you I love you I ain't talking about you but I just got to say the truth there's some people who think well if I come in December and January uh, then I'll be straight the rest of the year don't get me wrong, I wish that was true. I mean, because that would give me the rest of the year off from preaching and preparing and doing all this kind of stuff, but it just don't happen. God says you need him more and more. And so what God is telling them, and he's really teaching his disciples, what you must understand after all of the miracles,
miracles that I gave you, feeding the 4,000, doing all of this, you must realize you need me more. And is there anybody in here that can testify, I need more of Jesus. I'm not just going to stop on Sunday morning. I'm going to tune in at Bible study and turn up Wednesday. I'm going to come at noon. I'm going to come at 7. I'm going to stream live. I'm going to go on the YouVersion app and read my Bible so I can understand more about Jesus because here's the reality. There are so many of us who try just to get one touch but somebody in here that can testify I need another touch. And is there anybody in here that can testify I need more and more and more of Jesus. Here's the reality. Once I get him, I want more of him. And once I get more of him, I want more of him. And once I get more of him, I want more of him. I ought to have about 50 people that can testify. I need more of Jesus in my life. And I want God to continue to bless me so that I can have all God wants me to have. Can you jump up and push your neighbor in the back and tell your neighbor, I need more of Jesus. He so can you see anything? I see men as trees. So here's what Jesus does. He says, all right, because you're honest enough. Let, let me give this example. When I was, when I was younger, I, I, I used to really, I had to wear glasses. I've been wearing glasses for a long time. I wear contacts now. And like most young people at, at a certain age, you know, you think you look crazy if you have on glasses. And so what I used to do when I went to the eye doctor, I used to lie and say I could see something when I really couldn't. And then I had the unmitigated gall to get mad because the glasses that I got were the prescription based upon what I said. And I couldn't see clearly. Y'all missing it. See, that's what some of us do with God. We go to God and pray, and God is asking how things now. Oh, everything is good now. You just lying. Tell God everything. Tell God, yeah, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I don't see clearly yet. I need you to touch me again. Is there anybody in here that can testify? I need God to touch me again. So tell the truth when you're praying, God, you're giving me vision and revelation before in 2016, but I'm still not seeing it clearly yet. God, give me more of you. I need another touch. And that's what Jesus did because the last thing we see is perfectly cured. Here it is, verse 25. Here it is. It's time to get out of here. Verse 25. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again. And he looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. All right, here's what God is saying. God is saying what you got the first time was just the first touch. Yeah, yeah, the first time you came to church and got excited, that was just the first touch. But if you're honest enough, you'll testify, I need more of this, so I'm going to keep coming back. Yeah, the first time you read the word and got a revelation, you said, oh, I, I, I see some things differently now. And God is saying that was just the first touch. But if you understand something, if I keep reading his word, I'll get more of him. And is there anybody in here that can testify? I just need another touch. Let me go ahead and help you out. Is that God is able and wants to restore you. Because when he said that he gave him his sight back and restored him, it was complete restoration. In other words, I'm restoring it. That word restore literally means to bring back to perfect condition okay y'all missed it he said you were you could see before and you had 20 20 vision but then however it happened you went blind god said the first touch may have brought you uh, uh to, to another ratio of vision but he said that's not enough god says i want to completely 
restore you. So he said, when I touch you again, I'm going to give you back everything that you lost. And it's going to be better than it was before. Is there anybody in here that can testify? I thank God that he's going to bring back everything that I lost and it's going to be better than it was before. Why? Because God wants to see, wants you to see clearly. God wants your life to be whole. And is there anybody in here that can testify I thank God for another touch and maybe somebody else can jump up and testify I'm here today because I need another touch I need God to do more for me than he did in 2016 well let me go ahead and close this sermon because let me tell you about people that God touched in the Bible yeah he touched a man with leprosy in a city in Galilee Galilee. He touched Peter's mother-in-law in Capernaum. Many people in a crowd in Capernaum, he also touched. And can I tell you that God is in the touching business because the reality is that when he created the world, he created humankind with a touch. Everything else he spoke to an existence. But when it came to mankind, the Bible says that he put his hand on the earth and he began to form and shape man in his own image and after his own likeness which means he put his hands on us and ever since the beginning of time God has had his hands on us and is there anybody in the room that can testify I thank God that he has his hands on me even when it doesn't feel like that God doesn't have his hands on me he he still has his hands on me uh, because all night last night uh, the enemy didn't come in and destroy me uh, it was because uh, he had his hands on me uh, the reason uh, that the boiler didn't break down uh, and blow up the house uh, is because God uh, has his hands on me uh, the reason I didn't die uh, in that car accident uh, is because God uh, has his hands on me uh, and is there anybody in here uh, that can testify uh, the reason my family is intact uh, is because God uh, has his hands on me uh, can you thank God uh, for having his hands on you uh, and so all throughout the Bible uh, we see so many people uh, that God has touched uh, he touched a 12 year old girl uh, in Capernaum uh, he touched two blind men uh, in Capernaum uh, he touched a few people uh, in Nazareth uh, a man who was deaf and could hardly talk uh, he touched him too uh, he touched a blind man uh, in Jerusalem uh, he touched a man in a synagogue uh, or a woman who could not stand straight uh, he touched two other blind men uh, near Jericho uh, he touched a servant uh, of the high priest uh, whose ear Peter had cut off uh, in the garden of Gethsemane uh, and I come I'm gonna tell you uh, that there's power uh, in the hands of Jesus. Can you praise him uh, and testify? Uh, I thank God uh, for his hands uh, because the same hands uh, can feed me uh, and defend me uh, all at the same time. Uh, bump your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor, uh, thank God uh, for his hands. Uh, come on, man, I'm ready to get out of here. Uh, thank God uh, for his hands. Uh, well, pastor, that was a long time ago. Uh, do you have any? any modern people uh, that can testify uh, about the touch of Jesus uh, because all the people you read uh, were in the Bible uh, and they were around uh, when Jesus was around. Uh, I need a fresh example uh, about how somebody uh, can be touched by Jesus. Uh, well, I know this is about 40 years old, uh, but in 1964, uh, a young man by the name of Bill Gaither, uh, he was traveling with a friend and they were doing crusades uh, and the preacher told Bill uh, listen you've written some good songs uh, and I want you to write a song uh, about being touched by Jesus uh, 
because when I read the word uh, there are a whole lot of people uh, that's been touched by the hand of God uh, and so write a song about it uh, Bill gave the thought about that thing uh, and he got his pen and paper out uh, and he penned these words uh, shackled by uh, a heavy burden uh, neath a load uh, of guilt and shame uh, then the hand uh, of Jesus touched me uh, and now I'm no longer uh, the same uh, he touched me uh, oh he touched me uh, and all the joy uh, that floods my soul uh, something uh, anybody in here knows uh, that when he touches you uh, something happens uh, something uh, happened uh, and now I know uh, he touched me uh, and made me whole uh, since I met uh, this blessed Savior uh, since he cleansed uh, and made me whole uh, I will never uh, cease to praise him uh, I'll shout it uh, wherever I go uh, he touched me uh, oh uh, he touched me uh, and all the joy uh, that floods my soul uh, something uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can shout uh, something uh, happened in my life uh, something uh, since Jesus uh, came into my life uh, what a change uh, that he brought uh, something uh, happened uh, and now uh, I know uh, he uh, he touched me uh, and he made uh, me whole uh, but I got a sneaky suspicion uh, that somebody else uh, can testify uh, I've been laid up uh, in the hospital uh, and the doctors didn't know uh, what they would do uh, so I turned uh, to the wall uh, and I prayed uh, to Jesus uh, and in the midnight hour he stepped in uh, and he touched me uh, and healed my body uh, if I'm speaking to you uh, come up here uh, and slap five to me uh, somebody uh, can testify uh, I was weak uh, didn't have no money uh, didn't have a dime in my pocket uh, but I prayed uh, to Jesus uh, and he touched me uh, and changed my life uh, is there anybody in here uh, that the devil uh, was trying to get you uh, but you prayed uh, and he touched you uh, and changed your life uh, now praise him uh, and give him glory uh, and thank him uh, that I've been touched uh, by the hand of Jesus uh, I've been touched uh, by the hand of God uh, grab your neighbor uh, oh shucks uh, I feel like preaching uh, grab your neighbor uh, by the hand uh, and said he touched me uh, oh uh, he touched me uh, and the joy uh, that floods my soul uh, something 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 uh, happened uh, and now now yeah now yeah I know uh, he touched me uh, and he made uh, me whole uh, well pastor uh, what does Jesus touch uh, feel like uh, when you've been touched uh, you got new vision uh, when you've been touched uh, you got more joy uh, when you've been touched uh, you walk straight uh, when you've been touched uh, you speak right uh, when you've been touched uh, you jump high when you've been touched it feels good come here Jeremiah he said it's like fire in my bones now praise him and give him glory praise him and shout hallelujah and lift your hands and tell Jesus here are my hands touch me praise him Praise him! Praise him!
Is there anybody that needs another touch? Touch your finance, touch your marriage, touch your ministry, touch your neighborhood, touch your house, touch your bills, touch your health, touch your body, touch your car, touch your wife, touch your children, touch your schools. Tell somebody, touch me, Jesus. You plan that thing, girl. Touch me, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 yeah. Now lift your hands and use your hands symbolically for the touch of Jesus. Now lay your hands on your head and say, I've been touched by Jesus and it feels good. It feels good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He touched me. He touched me. He touched me. Oh, oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now, now I know. Anybody in here feel better? Do you feel better? Then open your mouth and say thank you Jesus for touching my life. Your kids could have been out in the street but he touched you. You may have been out in the street and went to prison but he brought you out safe and whole. Stand up and shout. Is there anybody in here that can testify? Mama was an alcoholic. Daddy was an alcoholic. Daddy wasn't around. Aunties and them were alcoholic but I came out not taking a single drink it's because he touched you but somebody can testify I used to do all of that and more but I'm delivered because he touched me yeah yeah and I'm not going to stop because I need another touch another healing another deliverance another breakthrough more bills to be paid uh, a bigger house uh, a better car uh, my kids coming home uh, now praise him uh, praise him Wow, what a powerful message. Listen, I'm out of time, but I'm definitely not out of message. Tune in every week for Inspire Me TV or listen to us on the radio at Inspire Me Radio 98.7 FM every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. But hey, better yet, come check us out live every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. right here at the Inspiration Church 2900 Philadelphia Drive. Listen, if you can't make it, you can also stream live every Sunday at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. at inspirationcity.org forward slash live. Listen, I want to pray for you. Listen, if you haven't received Christ into your heart, receive him right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you and we thank you. We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that your son Jesus was raised from the dead and we know that we are saved right now. Listen, God loves you. I love you. I hope to see you soon. God bless you.